we have our biggest update yet to SureCart. This is going to be update version number 1.1. .1. And let's see what we have inside. We've got this nice change log here. And I'm going to go through each of these items one by one. Now I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. The biggest item is going to be the addition of PayPal. So now you can use PayPal to sell your SureCart products. Here is a checkout page. I'm kind of proud of myself that I designed. I'm going to work on a tutorial on how to get this nice, simple design for yourself. Probably also give the design away, but here's my checkout form and you can see I have enabled PayPal. And so right here is the credit card option. And then I can go right there and select the PayPal option. So let me show you how to set this up. In your website, go to SureCart and click on settings. And then we're gonna click right here where it says processors. You can see I've got Stripe and here is my PayPal. Now you will probably not have it say that it's enabled because you haven't done it yet. All you need to do is click here. It's gonna open up in a new tab. It's gonna take you straight, straight to the platform. Now I'm already logged into the cloud platform. If you're not logged in, you'll just need to put in your SureCart username and password your email and password and log in and make sure you're on payment processors. Now off to the right of the PayPal box, there'll be this option. It's going to look like this. It's going to say connect. And when you click on it, it's going to take you right on over to PayPal's website. All you need to do is log in and it's automatically going to be connected to the platform. Now, unlike Stripe, when you connect Stripe right away, it connects you to the live Stripe platform and the test Stripe platform. PayPal's differently. When you connect, you are only connecting to the live platform. That's your main account, but they also offer something called PayPal Sandbox. So you'll want to create a PayPal Sandbox account. I believe it's just sandbox.paypal.com. And it's a test environment. It's like a clone of PayPal, but nothing's real. And you just create an account there and you'll want to use those credentials right here in order to be able to easily test PayPal payments and integrations and things like that. So as you can see right here, I haven't connected my PayPal sandbox yet. So right here, this form happens to be in live mode, but if I put it in test mode, I'm only going to be able to test the Stripe because I haven't connected to the PayPal sandbox yet. So let me show you that and then let me connect to the PayPal sandbox and then we'll test it. So I'm going to change the form from live to test mode. Let's go ahead and save that. And now let's view the page. And what you're going to essentially see is there's no PayPal option. So let's connect to the PayPal sandbox. I'm going to click on connect. It's going to open up inside of a new tab and I'm on PayPal's website. And right here it says test store because I'm in the PayPal sandbox right now. So I'm going to log in. I'm going to pop in my email and my password and I'll resume the video. I've logged in and it's done. Everything's connected. So I can click right here. It's going to take me back to the store. All right. Now you can see the PayPal sandbox is also configured. So it's going to be the same setup for the normal PayPal. You'll just go to PayPal, log in, and you'll be connected to the platform. So now when I do a refresh, let's see what's different because I've added the sandbox mode. I now have access to a credit card transaction as well as PayPal inside of test mode. Now there's one more aspect to this PayPal integration temporarily right now, it's only going to work for one-time payments. So this is a plan right here with a one-time payment. This one right here is a payment plan. So it's going to be multiple months. And when you click on it, you're going to see the PayPal option went away. And this is because we're just waiting on some final approvals with PayPal so that you'll be able to take these subscription payments or these split pay payments without you needing to have a PayPal account that has referenced transactions. I know that's very techie, all these phrases that I'm throwing at you, but just know that you'll be able to sell subscriptions with PayPal and split pays with PayPal soon enough. Next, we have a brand new dashboard experience for you. So when you go to SureCart and click on dashboard, you're going to see this beautiful dashboard. Now, I don't have this populated with any data. Let's just say that this is a very beautiful and then you'll see recent orders here as well. In fact, why don't I go back and place a test order so that you'll be able to see that it gets added here to recent orders immediately. 
I'll place this order with PayPal, their test mode. So I'll click on PayPal and I need to agree to the terms of service. And I'm gonna click right here where it says PayPal checkout. This is a little modal pop-up that PayPal gives me. All I need to do is log in. And you can see right here, the URL is showing that I'm in the sandbox, which is the test mode. So it doesn't actually matter what I choose. I'm just going to, and these also, these options are available for the buyer they're paying for and all these uh, different options that PayPal makes available. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on pay now and it's going to go ahead and process the payment. And here it is and it's taking me straight over to the thank you page. And then I'm gonna refresh the dashboard and you notice I don't see the order. And that's because there's an option here on the top right for test mode. This is so you could see your data that you've processed in test mode while testing the platform and have it be separate from the real numbers. So I'm not gonna see anything here because that order was in test mode. I'll toggle this on and you can see now it's showing the purchase and then here are my test mode orders. And we also have this quick actions uh, option here off to the right to quickly create a product or a form or access support from us. Now for this dashboard here in these grids, uh, we have date options right here. So you can filter it by the date that you want and also the range daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly. So it gives you a good snapshot overview of the health of your store, the revenue, the amount of orders that are coming in, as well as the average order value. But just remember, if you're placing orders while in test mode, it will only show if you have test mode enabled. Just like that, that all goes away because this is now in live mode. Next, we have a nice improvement to the checkout forms themselves, and these are called checkout messages. Let me show you. So I'm gonna go to the forms, then I'll click into this uh, membership form right here. I think this is the one I'm already using, great. Now, when I click right here and select the entire form, there's this new option here that says loading text. And when I expand it, there are these different stages of what happens when your buyer fills this out and then clicks on the button. So if there's no message that's displayed to them and say that your processor might be running just a tad bit slower, there's a lot that goes on for a payment to actually take place. And it can be kind of uncomfortable for the buyer. Is it working? Do I refresh the page? Do I place the order again? So that's why we have introduced this loading text. So these checkout messages. So when the order is being submitted, it's going to display this text, then processing the payment, then confirming the payment, and then the success message, and then it will redirect to the thank you page. Now you can <laughs> display whatever you want here. You can have fun with it. You can put your brand on it. You can translate it. You can do whatever you want, but it's gonna make sure that people buying on your website, even if the process uh, from when they click on the button to when they make it to the thank you page takes 15 seconds or 20 seconds, they'll see these series of messages that will bring them comfort knowing that their payment is going through. Now the next new change has to deal with invoices and receipts. Before we would have a separate invoice and a separate receipt. The reason we do both is because in the European Union businesses are required that are selling online to provide an invoice as well as the receipt when something is purchased. What we've done is we've merged the two to make it more simple. So before in the dashboard, there would be an option here that said invoices. And it was very confusing because the invoice was to be for a purchase that, that hasn't been paid for yet. So it was quite confusing. So we've gone ahead and merged it. Now we'll be bringing invoices back, but it will be manually created invoices when we add that functionality. So now when your buyer wants to access the invoice or receipt, they'll go here, they'll click on the order that they wanna retrieve that information. 
they'll see the order information details right there. And then there's this option to download the receipt or the invoice. And when they click on it, it will open up in a new tab and it will be the combination receipt and invoice. So you can see here it is, it's been downloaded. I'll go ahead and click on this and it opened straight up in my web browser. And this contains all of the requirements for a proper invoice inside of the European Union, as well as a receipt all combined in one. Now, the next big change, I don't know if you picked up on it before, when someone was on your dashboard and they're looking at their orders and they clicked into the order, it would take them to the platform and it would give them the links to download their receipt or their invoice, access their downloads. But now, when you do it, it leaves them on your website. So when your buyers go to access their orders, they're never taken to the platform. They stay on your website the entire time. And now the next big change, I don't know if you've noticed it yet either. We now have the option of having sequential order numbers. This also goes to meet an EU requirement for invoices and orders that they must be sequential. So we've gone ahead and added this as an option. Now enabling this is very easy. I'm gonna go back to the website here, go to settings, and then I'm gonna click right here where it says orders and receipts. And you're gonna see the new option right here, which is order numbers counter. So you can have it be set to sequential or random numbers and letters. The random numbers and letters is for confidential purposes. So, so no one knows the sequence of your orders. But if you have a legal requirement for it to be sequential, you can choose sequential right here, as well as you can add a prefix to the number if you require that. And the last big change can only be done when you're logged into the platform. And this has been requested. And so here's the option that you can only do here, clear test data. So what this means is if you have a form in test mode, and you place those orders, those customers and those orders will be deleted if you click on this option. So for me, all of my orders that you see here when I have this in test mode, these will all be completely deleted when I click on this button. So let's have a little bit of fun and test it out in this video. All I have to do is click where it says clear test data. We give you a warning just for you to confirm, and let's go ahead and read it. It says, are you sure you want to clear all the test data? All of your test data will be deleted, and you cannot undo this. The deletion of your data will be scheduled and can take up to a few minutes to complete. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on OK, and there it is, and we get this little notice that it might take a few minutes. So let's go ahead and go back, and I'm gonna click on Orders, and you're gonna see it's already been all wiped out. If I go to my dashboard and I go into test mode, you can see it's also been all completely wiped out. So let me be clear again, this is all the orders that were placed when a form was in test mode. As well, if you were creating new users during that process to purchase these test products, all those users will be deleted as well. Some people like to test their checkout forms with 100% off coupons, but the payment gateways are in a live mode, but they're discounting it to a dollar or zero dollars or something along those lines. Those are not considered test data. Test data is only when the payment gateway on that form is in that test mode. If you like what you see so far, if you can give this video a thumbs up and better yet, head on over to the WordPress plugin directory for Shortcart and leave a review. Now I wanna tell you a, a, a positive review, a five-star review. Uh, 
I want to tell you what's coming next. So I got a nice little list right here in front of me. So what we're going to be doing probably later this week is we're going to open up the different Stripe payment methods. So you can have a Stripe account and one of the payment methods can be ideal or uh, bank transfer, all of that. We are going through each one of those one by one to make sure they all work fine. And then we're going to make it so that you can add as many of those as you want to your uh, to your account and so you can add those to your forms and you can start taking uh, all these different payment methods and with that we want to add as many payment methods as fast as possible for you so we're going to be working on molly and we're going to be working on offline payments those have been the two biggest requests so far of course i've also mentioned that we want to in, in addition to those, add Razor Pay, and we want to add Mercado Pego, and I think there was uh, one or two other pay stack in Africa. Now, this next update's also going to have some additional integrations. Specifically, we're going to be adding an integration for LearnDash groups, and we'll have other integrations. We have a long list of integrations we're working on releasing. Lifter LMS, um, Paid Membership Pro, Thrive Automator. We've got a whole list of them that we're working on. And we have two big things. If you haven't been following along, let me show you right now. We have built a complete automation platform that directly ties into Surecart and all different SaaS platforms, different plugins on your website. You can sell on one website and create the account on the other's website and give access this is an incredible tool. It's called Sure Triggers, and we're going to have the open beta for this where you'll be able to go register, get an account, and start using it. And then shortly after, in about two weeks, we are going to start selling Sure members. It's a content restriction plugin. And if you like how elegant and simple it is to use Surecart, you're going to love Sure members. Let me just show you one really cool thing that we, re well, two really cool things we recently added. So we added a drip integration. So if you want to drip content out, uh, you can select the content. Like for example, this content will be available after seven days and you can choose the exact time of day that it will be made available. So if you're trying to have kind of an evergreen cohort, type of situation. It is so easy to pull off with the new drip integration rules. And another cool thing we have when you're on the front end of your website, you'll see the Sure Members logo. And when you hover over it, it will tell you right here if this page is in any of these different content restriction groups. And if you want to add this page to one, you just click on it. This little modal comes up. You click on the a restriction group that you want to add it to and simply add it and then save it and then that piece of content will be restricted. So there's a lot to love about Sure Members. I'm really excited about it and what you're going to be able to do adding content restriction to your websites and also Sure Triggers is an amazing platform. I can't wait to make more videos and introduce you more to what you're going to be able to do with Sure Triggers. Really powerful stuff. As usual, spread the word about Surecart. Let your friends know no, go on social media networks and share about Surecart. We would really appreciate it. It helps the team get going as well as if you could leave a review on the plugin directory. That is huge for us, a super motivator. So we're going to have another update in about a week with those new integrations and those new payment options. And until then, thanks for watching this video.